the most serious health crisis in a century. Japan has now seen a big spike in cases. They've declared a state of national emergency. What about hospitals? Because I know the CDC is advising Americans to, to be prepared for significant disruption to their lives. And New York is opening a handful of new testing sites. New Jersey is a corridor state. So much of what we need, whether it be medical supplies or groceries, wouldn't get to us if it were not for these brave folks uh, working in our ports at the International Longshoremen's Association. Hi, I'm Harold Daggett, president of the International Longshoremen's Association. I'm here today to talk about the women and the men of the ILA. My hero and hero to this country. These people have been putting themselves out on the front line since this virus took over. I don't know how to thank them. Of every day, every night, I pray for them. Everybody's starting to realize the importance of their job is to keep these ships coming in and going out and keeping commerce flowing. We're bringing in medical supplies, we're bringing in clothes, anything you can think of comes in on a ship. The governor of New Jersey has spoken so beautiful about the longshoremen because he realizes that his state depends on the fluctuation of all the cargo coming in and going out. Not only in this state, in all the states in, in, the, in the United States, on the eastern uh, Gulf and on the Gulf side of uh, the South Atlantic. My people are out there every day and they are on the front lines and they're sacrificing themselves because of this virus. Right from the jump, we, we got involved with uh, communicating with our employers. We ordered the proper PPE and we made some operational changes. We split the shifts up and we make sure that all of our people are working uh, it, with social distancing, six feet away. Um, in the shops, we have everybody separated. Everybody has been working as a team, whether it's, it's for the rank and file, the local officials, the, uh, the local management, everybody. There's no line in the sand here during this crisis. We are all working as one, acting responsible so that this doesn't spread throughout the ports and that we can keep com America's commerce moving. You know, the men and women of my union, the ILA, they're covering from Maine to Texas, the Atlantic Coast District, the South Atlantic and Gulf. This virus started on the West Coast, and now it's over on the East Coast, and now it's throughout the whole United States and globally throughout the world. This is dead serious stuff. I've had people who have passed away in my union, in Houston, New Orleans. We've had people who are sick in different ports, but yet, the men and women of this union go to work every day, putting their lives on the line. And I have to talk about my heroes. Yes, the nurses, the firemen, the cops are definitely heroes, but so are the longshoremen, because without my union, nothing's gonna move in this country, in the, in the United States. If these peers have to shut down, just think about it. There'll be no medical supply coming in, no clothes, Nothing, nothing, nothing will come in. And we'll be in bad shape. So we have to keep this economy flowing. I have talked to senators, governors. I have Port Authority. I have, you name it, USMX, MYSA, everybody. Trying to get PPEs for the members to keep them healthy. It's so hard. We're getting there, but it's so hard. And I wrote a letter. I wrote a letter to the President of the United States. Dear President Trump, as you know, our nation ports are critical to the country's economy and the well-being of all citizens. Everything from food to medical supply travels through our national ports on a daily basis. At the heart of these ports are the men and women of the International Longshoremen Association AFL CIO ILA, who work timelessly and are dedicated to ensuring that the operation in the ports continue uninterrupted without longshoremen workers to load and unload ships, cargo would be stationary, resulting in a decreased supply of food, medical supply, clothing, and other necessities items 
for American citizens. Of course, longshoremen workers are able to perform their jobs only if they are satisfactorily healthy and are not plagued by a virus such as the COVID virus. So I want the world to know that longshoremen, longshoremen women and longshoremen men are on the front lines and doing their job every day and sacrificing their lives to keep this country moving, to keep everything going, the economical engines that supports this whole world. And even the dock workers in Europe, even the dock workers throughout the world, we should applaud them because we hear about the truck drivers, we hear about other unions. The truck drivers wouldn't be able to drive a truck if the cargo don't come in off those ships that my men and my women unload every single day and night. So I want to call my union the heroes. They are the heroes of this virus, and I want the world to know. And Mr. President, I want you to know. I think the average American doesn't realize what a longshoreman really does. If you ask most people, they say uh, a fisherman. But uh, a true longshoreman, both the men and women that work on the waterfront, are, are true frontline workers right after uh, the healthcare workers. And any type of commerce that comes into this country, 95% of the goods that come into this country come through the ports. So it's very important to keep our ports running because our country, our economy can shut down overnight. I've never been prouder to be an ILA member than I am now. I want to, on behalf of Harold Daggett and Dennis Daggett and Stevie Knott and all the other ILA officers, thank our membership from Maine to Texas and Canada and, the, and uh, Puerto Rico. The work they're doing, keeping the commerce moving in our country is actually spectacular. The ILA is so very important. We're the front lines of moving commerce. Uh, they wouldn't get groceries, medical supplies, Anything that comes into this country has to go through us. And our men are out here every day fighting this battle and doing a great job. This is a very unusual time. There was no blueprint. There was no benchmark we went by. This is all new to us. And what we're doing is we're creating <clears throat> all these bulletins for the workers to look at, to refer to. If they have a family member that's sick, if they have symptoms, what scenarios take place and what can be done for them by the union and management. We send out circulars to everyone, to all the locals from Maine to Texas. Everyone gets the circulars and they hand them out to, their, to men and women. It uh, explains to them what they should do if they, should, if they get sick. Uh, it explains to them what they should do as far as their mask and their gloves and to keep safe, and the distancing and, every, and whatever needs to be done. Nothing moves around here without the longshoremen. All the, the PPE and things that come from overseas, it doesn't get to the hospital workers or the police or firemen without us taking it off the ships. Everything has to be moving. If we don't work, everybody gets stuck over here. We don't have nothing to come into their country. So we have to work. The union is providing everything, gloves, masks, sanitation to wash our hands and everything. They're doing a great job. I feel fine, I feel great. They supply us with everything we need, you know, the masks, the gloves, they sanitize all the trucks and all, everything. So we feel safe, we feel safe. Well, without the ILA, nothing moves in this country. Um, hospitals don't get supplies, groceries don't get supplies. Um, we have to keep America moving. That's what we do here at the ILA. Extremely important, extremely important that, that we get all this cargo out to the people. Because if, if that doesn't happen, the whole country will stop. First off, I want to thank uh, Harold Daggett, Dennis Daggett, and the rest of the team with the International and all our uh, local 1804 um, delegates. They've been extraordinary through this. Our safety has been their top issue. Um, they've, we've got temp checks going on outside. They've made sure we are equipped with all our masks, hand sanitizer. They really put the men first. I also
also want to praise the management part of this union. USMX, Dave Adams, Paul DeMarino, John Nardi, NYSA, Port Authority. All these people on the front lines have been working hand in hand with us. I got to really give them a, an applaud. They, they have been on the phone every day with me making sure that our men who get sick are being compensated for that. They have been so grateful to help us out. And naturally we're helping them out. But it goes to show you how we all pull together when this crisis hits. And I am so proud of management and the companies that we are working for. And I want to thank them very much for all their hard work. I can't thank management enough. I think we've been working through this collectively. We've been working, they've been very cooperative with us. And anything that we've asked as far as keeping our members safe, whether it's PPE, whether it's operational changes, uh, compensation packages, they've been more than cooperative and we're very appreciative of that. And Chopper 4 is now over the Rotterdam. That ship is just coming into Port Everglades as we speak. Now, what we are expecting, we expect to see 10 critically ill patients taking off of the, uh, the Zan Dam and sent to Broward Health. Another four, we understand, will go to Larkin Community Hospital. People with symptoms will stay on board and then be treated by medical staff. And we're expecting about 1,200 people to be sent home today and Saturday. So this whole thing is going to take a process. We we are super proud of our local officials and our rank and file members of Local 1526 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They were the ones who offloaded the cruise ship that came in with over 70 people that were basically confirmed cases of COVID. And also, unfortunately, there were some, some deaths on that ship. And our people got dressed up in hazmat equipment and went out there selflessly and, and did the job and did it well. And uh, we did everything we could to cooperate with the state and federal government and um, our people, once again, answered the call. We are definitely frontline workers and we're definitely an extremely important part of the commerce right now. Everything that we're working on, uh, being proactive in the industry, we are constantly communicating to the rank and file so that everybody knows where, what the policies, what the protocols are, and where we stand together. And it's been a success, absolutely been a success. And we've kept the panic down, and, we, and I think we've kept the numbers down. Since we've had the, the page open, and it, we're getting a lot of activity on it, I think you see in New York how the numbers were rising, and since that page has started, the numbers are starting to dip down, and, and hope with the help of God, that will continue to be the trend. I've been doing public relations for the International Longshoremen's Association for almost 40 years and we've been doing social media probably now for 20 years. I never thought I'd see anything like this. Um, we're actually where the social media became such a critical part of the longshoremen's defense uh, against this coronavirus, but it has. And um, the longshore men and women up and down the coast are working round the clock. And so I'm trying to replicate their dedication, their perseverance, their bravery by keeping them informed uh, posting articles on our ILA webpage, but also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to keep give them the up, most up-to-date information. ILA President Harold Daggett believes in open communication, believes in honesty, letting them know when things are good and when things are bad, when things are dangerous and uh, where they need to take precaution. So when the ILA officers are making an effort to get uh, PPE to their members, and they have been making an extraordinary effort, he wants to make sure they know. When they hit roadblocks, Harold Daggett wants to make sure that the ILA men and women know about that as well. And getting PPE equipment has been tough, but the ILA officers have been with, along with the USMX, New York Shipping Association in this port of New York and New Jersey, and other employer associations have been working with the port authorities at their respective ports, uh, obtaining the necessary equipment to keep longshoremen safe. I'm extremely proud. Um, I think it's, you know, it's very risky, the world we live in today. And with our guys showing up, it goes to show you how strong the ILA really is. Basically, like I said, 95% of the cargo comes through the ports. Um, the scary part is a lot of that is pharmaceuticals, um, certain foods that people need. Um, certain supplies like PPE all come through the ports. Uh, there's only so much that you can air freight. 
but large quantities of cargo come through the ports. That's why it's so important to keep the ports open, be responsible, make sure that you're, you're following all the guidelines that we put out there, and in doing so, we will keep these ports moving and we'll, we'll keep commerce moving in America. We're the economic engine for the state of New Jersey and New York, and whatever comes through here goes out to the hospitals and to all the other places, and without us, everything would be empty. I never thought that I could be more prouder of the ILA than I have been. You know, I'm a fourth generation, it's, it's in my DNA, it's part of my culture. But once again, the, the membership of this union never ceases to amaze me. And everybody has rose to the occasion. Everybody has been following our guidelines, working responsible, making sure they're not taking the virus home, that are infecting their families, um, taking care of loved ones that are infected, and being responsible and not bringing it back to the workplace to get other people infected. So I can't tell you how proud I am of our membership and how proud I am of our officers, especially in the Port of New York and New Jersey where it is the epicenter in this country. Um, our union officials, our locals have worked so closely together. It's a wonderful team. I'm just so glad, I'm, I'm glad, I'm so humbled to be part of the, of the team and the work that we've done. And uh, I could not be prouder of the membership of this union. And I want the world to know, and, and I want the world, more importantly, I want the world to appreciate what our membership does on a daily basis for this country and how uh, selfless they have and they've sacrificed so much, including their health, to make sure the job gets done and to make sure that we are moving the world's economy. I just want to say one more thing to the men and women of the ILA. I am so proud of all of you. I don't know how to express that to you. From the bottom of my heart, for the hard work and the dedication that you are performing every day and every night out on those piers. So I wanna say God bless to you and your families. Stay safe, keep those masks on, and thank you so much for your hard work and dedication. I love you guys.